Hello everyone, back to you into today's first video. We're going to have a look at the ECMD 30 day month head model for today's first video. Uh, it's going to take us into the uh, final stages of March, so we're going into the first month of the spring of um, 2019 with this update. Looking at the temperature and precipitation anomalies for the UK and for Europe as well uh, for the next 30 days. Coming up later on this afternoon, we'll have a detailed look at weather next week to 10 days with GFS, ECM and uh, those sort of uh, shorter range models. And of course, we'll bring you up to date with all of the latest developments with um, the winter heat wave that we are currently experiencing uh, in the UK and across other northern parts of Europe as well. Right, so we're at the Hungarian uh, Met Office for this uh, first video. Big thank you to Ben for supplying the uh, charts. We can't show you 500 bit of our heights or mean sea level pressure, but you can get a rough idea uh, what the model is uh, forecasting from its temperature and precipitation uh, anomalies. So let's get on. We're going to start off with uh, week one temperature anomalies. It's week nine for uh, the year for 2019, but it's week one for our forecast period. So it remains a very mild, if not warm, scene across many parts of Europe uh, for the week ahead, taking us from the 25th of February through to the 3rd of March. Significantly warmer than average across Scandinavia. Some parts of southern Norway are between around 6 and 10 degrees above average. Widely across Scandinavia, we're between around uh, 3 and 6 degrees above average. Also 3 to 6 degrees above average in much of Ireland and the UK. And then we come down into uh, central and western parts of Europe, a very, very warm scene there, from Spain and Portugal over in the southwestern corner, right way up towards Poland, and even going up towards some of those Baltic uh, areas up here, uh, we see temperature anomalies widely, again, between around 3 and 6 degrees above average. The southeastern corner is cooler, so from southern Italy, the Asiatic and the Balkans, down into uh, the Black Sea, Greece, Turkey, those areas in that southeastern corner are a lot, uh, a, lot cool, uh, a lot cooler there in the southeastern corner. Temperature anomalies are colder than average, so still winter holds on in the far southeastern corner of Europe, but most places uh, are very warm seen in the week. Air precipitation anomalies are really dry, through most areas. So um, all of this warm weather is being caused by a large and extensive ridge of high pressure that's dominating uh, across much of Europe. And so that uh, keeps the temperature not only much warmer than average, but also much milder than average too. The far north of Norway looks uh, rather above average with precipitation there. Iceland also above average with precipitation. So you can see where the jet stream is, long way north. Uh, also in the far southeastern corner, so parts of Greece, uh, down there and probably down towards Cyprus. Those sort of areas are experiencing uh, some above average precipitation. But otherwise, it's a dry uh, scene. So we're either talking about uh, slightly drier than average through many of these northeastern parts of Europe, or we're talking about substantially drier than average, such as we see here through much of the Mediterranean and through much of southern Europe. It is a really dry scene out there uh, in the week ahead. Week 2 temperature anomalies, uh, week 10th of the year, taking us from the 4th through to the 10th of March, again are looking very mild. The warmth, the core of the warmth though, is shifting eastwards. So the area of temperature, uh, temperature anomalies that are between 3 and 6 degrees above average is moving from the west northwest of Europe over towards the eastern side of Europe, telling us that possibly we are getting more influence from the Atlantic, in March, the Atlantic is still going to be generally mild. Uh, it will give generally milder than average temperatures. But the temperature anomaly is coming down a bit in the far sort of west of Europe, particularly for Ireland, uh, for the UK as well, for France, Spain, for Portugal. We kind of like just a little bit milder than average, up to around three degrees above average for some of those uh, areas, which is still quite a substantial anomaly, but kind of like Ireland is around average, as is Portugal. Whereas the core of the warmth is moving east, which you'll notice that through much of southern Europe, it is quite a mild scene as well. And down in the southeast, things are warming up. So around the Balkans, that's where temperature anomalies are lifting up and then going southwards uh, towards the Black Sea and then down towards Greece, Turkey. The temperature anomalies there are lifting up 
in the week ahead. So the warmth looks like it's shifting southwards and eastwards as it still is above average in the north and west of Europe, but slowly we're starting to lower temperature anomalies a little bit. And this is confirmed by the precipitation anomalies. Look at this big change uh, in week two. The 4th through to the 10th of March goes wetter than average, particularly so for these western parts of Europe. So for the UK, for Ireland, uh, for southern Scandinavia, so southern Norway, southern Sweden, Denmark, and then down into Germany, the low countries, France, northern parts of Spain and Portugal, above average rainfall there. This is a clear indication that westerlies are returning and we're bringing bouts of rain in from off the Atlantic too. Remember, westerlies in March are going to be generally quite mild still. But they will be cooler than these very warm southerly winds that have been bathing the country over the uh, past uh, week or so. Um, so still above average temperature anomalies, but lower, cooler, and also much more unsettled. Over in the east of Europe, we see precipitation anomalies lifting up there a little bit as well, uh, but not as much as further uh, further into uh, western parts of Europe and down in the southeast of Europe. And in fact, through much of the, uh, through much of the Mediterranean, away from Spain and Portugal anyway, much of the Med, um, particularly the southeastern part of Med, uh, we do see that um, temperature precipitation anomalies are going a little bit drier uh, than average there in week two. And then we go through to week three, which takes us from the 11th through to the 17th of uh, March. Uh, and again, we see that the core of the warmth, where we've got this area of temperature anomalies between three and six degrees above average, that's across the eastern side of Europe. Most of Europe is looking milder than average, so it remains the case that it's milder than average, well into the middle part of March by around 1 to 3 degrees above average, just in the far west across Ireland, UK, western parts of France, something down, Spain and Portugal. Those areas are closer to average with the temperature anomalies. But basically anywhere eastwards of kind of like eastern France, looks like it's milder than average, yes, but the core of the warmth is over on the eastern side of Europe, uh, just here, particularly affecting uh, countries like Ukraine, for example. So it remains a mild scene, well into March. Also remains quite unsettled. Remember, the further out we go, the uh, weaker the signal becomes. But we do still have a signal here for much of northwestern Europe to be wetter than average. So many parts of Scandinavia. Uh, down into west of Germany, through Belgium, Holland, into northern, uh, eastern, northern and west parts of France, and then into uh, Ireland and the UK. Those areas are coming out still with above average precipitation anomalies. Otherwise, most other parts of Europe are reverting close to average and models beginning to lose a signal. Still the suggestion, I think, that much of the Mediterranean is looking quite dry, uh, again, particularly in this southeastern corner around Greece and Turkey. Quite a lot of dry weather uh, there through the middle of March in week three. And then finally we go through to week four, which is week 12 for 2019. Temperature anomalies continue to hold up. So it looks like you're wearing for a mild March, if this is right. Temperatures uh, are above average from beginning to end. We just lose the uh, extremity of the uh, warmth, if you like, that we've got to begin with, uh, we gradually reduce the temperature anomaly to something closer to average, but still above average generally for most parts of Europe. Uh, UK, Ireland looking a little bit milder actually in this week, um, and also parts of France also looking quite mild as well. But again, it really is from France and the UK eastwards that most parts of Europe again have those temperature anomalies of around one to three degrees above average. Spain and Portugal coming out generally closer to average, but much of the Mediterranean, it is a mild scene. Uh, once again, significantly above average temperature uh, anomalies. And then finally, precipitation in week four, 18th to 24th of uh, March. Looks like we begin to lose those above average rainfall totals. So Scandinavia is still coming out with above average, uh, above average precipitation anomalies. To the north of Scotland, also above average with precipitation. Otherwise, most parts of Europe are around average, so the signal obviously is weakening again a lot as we get through to week four, as it usually does. But if anything, we're possibly just seeing a few hints there that the jet stream may be starting to push back northwards again in the second half of March, possibly beginning to raise the heights up to the south again. Uh, and maybe starting to get a bit of a ridge, although there's not a great deal of evidence of a ridge coming back into parts of Europe. But I think, reading between the lines, we're possibly hinting at the second half of March, 
pushes the jet stream northwards, possibly uh, raising, raising heights across central and southern parts of Europe again, so possibly turning drier and warmer in the second half of uh, March after a very unsettled uh, spell for the north and west of Europe, anyway, through the first half of March. So overall, we're looking at a milder than average month, uh, very substantially above average to start off with winter heat wave type conditions, but as we get through into the spring, Temperature anomalies, the warm temperature anomalies, shift over to the eastern side of Europe and the west begins to cool down a bit, although it is still above average. Um, but it turns much more unsettled in the north and the west of Europe through the first half of March. Um, I mean, possibly, possibly going back to something drier and uh, you would have thought warmer if heights are rising to the south in the second half of March. Right, we'll do it all over again next week. It's just a snapshot of what it is showing uh, today, but it might be showing something different next week. So uh, we will have a look at it again next Tuesday. It's a regular feature of this at Gazov is on a Tuesday. Uh, come back this afternoon when we'll have a detailed look at the weather for the next week to 10 days. So um, that can be quite an interesting view, bringing you all update with all of the information on the heat wave. Will we break any more records? You'll uh, find out in today's second video update. So afternoon, that's all for now though, and thanks for watching.